In this video, we're going to change gears just a little bit. We're going to talk about internal controls. And specifically, we're going to look at the bank reconciliation, which is one of the most important controls for cash. If you've ever balanced your checkbook, if you have a checking account, then in reality, you've really done a bank reconciliation. So let's look at some things that actually affect a bank reconciliation. Now keep in mind that a bank reconciliation is a reconciliation of the bank statement with your books, so the cash account on your books. And when you do a bank reconciliation, you're going to have, there's two parts to a bank recon. Oftentimes when we talk about a bank reconciliation, students often think we're just looking at the bank, adjustments to the bank, or adjustments to the book. You're actually looking at both. So that's why you see two parts here. We're going to start with the ending balance per the bank statement, as well as the ending balance per your books or the cash account. And there's things, there are things that are going to add to the bank's balance, and there's things that's going to add to your book balance. And the way I always like to think about it is when you're looking at items and trying to figure out is it going to affect the book or the bank, think about who knows about it. And if you don't know about it, or if someone doesn't know about it, that's the one that's going to have to adjust for it. So let's just look at some items here, step by step, and we're going to go through and see how they would affect the bank reconciliation. So think about a deposit in transit. A deposit in transit um, actually is something that you know about that the bank doesn't know about yet because you made the deposit, and think about usually when you make a deposit, it takes two or three days for it actually to uh, post to your account. So a deposit in transit is something that's already in your books, but it may not appear on the bank statement when you get it. So that's going to be an adjustment to the bank side of the bank reconciliation, and a deposit will end up increasing that bank balance. So that's going to be an addition to the bank side of the bank recon. Now an outstanding check, that's a check that you wrote, that you recorded in your books, and whoever you wrote it to may not have cashed it yet. So the bank knows nothing about it as of yet because it doesn't appear on your bank statement. However, when it does clear the bank, it will reduce your bank balance. Therefore, it's an adjustment to the bank side and it's a deduction from the bank balance. We can also have errors. There can be bank errors and there can be book errors. Let's start with bank errors. Now if it's a bank error, that means you get your bank statement and you're comparing it with your, your cash account or your, your checkbook register or whatever the case may be, and you find out that there's an error on the bank side. Well again, think about who knows about this error. You do. The bank doesn't know about it because you haven't informed them yet, but when you do, it will. It could either be an addition or a subtraction from your from your bank balance because it could be an error in your favor or not in your favor. You can also have book errors. When you get your bank statement, you may see that you recorded something incorrectly on your books. So this is an error the bank knows about because they did it right and you didn't and now you're informed about it and you have to fix your books. So just as the bank error could be an addition or a subtraction from the bank side, a book error can be an addition or a deduction from the book side of the bank reconciliation. And then we have EFTs. EFTs are elect electronic fund transfers. Maybe the bank is collecting rent for you, you're, in a land you're a landlord or, or something along those lines, or maybe they're automatically paying bills for you. So you may know that it's happening, but you may not know exactly when it's happening. So when you get your bank statement, that may be when you record this transaction. So this is something the bank knows about, but you don't necessarily have it in your books yet until you get the bank statement. So therefore, these will be a, a um, recording to the book side of the bank reconciliation, and it may be an addition or a deduction because you may have the bank collecting money for you, or you may have the bank paying money on your behalf. And then you can have service charges. Again, this may be something that you know is going to happen, but you may not know exactly when it's going to happen or the amount that it's going to be. So you don't know this until you get your bank statement. So the bank knows about it, but you don't know about it until you get the bank statement. So it's an adjustment to the book side and a service charge is obviously going to be a deduction from your book balance. NSF checks are checks you have received in payment from your clients or your customers for products or services you've performed and when you took it to the bank it didn't clear. 
Therefore, when you receive the check from your customer, you likely recorded it as payment and took their account receivable as being paid. So you cleared their account receivable account. And now you find out that no, they actually haven't paid you yet and your cash account didn't go up. So it's actually something the bank knows about because you found out about it when you got the bank statement. So it's going to be an adjustment to the book side and it's going to be a deduction because you originally recorded that as an addition to your cash because you thought the customer paid you, but the check was bad. So you had to subtract it from your book side. Now, what ultimately you want to happen once you finish your bank reconciliation is you're going to come up with an adjusted bank balance per the bank side of the bank recon and an adjusted book balance per the book side of the bank recon. These two should equal. They should be the same. So that's ultimately what we're looking for on the bank reconciliation is once we make all of our adjustments on both sides of the bank reconciliation to the bank's statement and to the book side, we should have the same number. The adjusted balances should be the same. Okay, so let's look at an example bank reconciliation. So the cash account of Ranger Security Systems reported a balance of $2,480 at May 31st. There were outstanding checks totaling $900 and a May 31st deposit in transit of $200. The bank statement, which came from Park City's bank, listed a May 31st balance of $3,800. Included in the bank balance was a collection of $630 on account from Kelly Brooks, a Ranger customer who pays the bank directly. The bank statement also shows a $20 service charge and a $10 in interest revenue that Ranger earned on his bank balance. We need to prepare Ranger's bank reconciliation at May 31st. So what I'd like for you to do is give it a shot. So press pause on your player now, come back and we'll look at it together. So very important is to make sure that we start correctly. So remember on a bank reconciliation, we start with the ending balances. So we're gonna take the ending balance from our bank and the ending balance from our books and that's where we're gonna start. We're gonna adjust that ending balance. So what does the bank know that we don't? What do we know that the bank doesn't know? Well, let's start with the bank side. Let's look at any additions that we may need to adjust the bank for. Things that we know about that do not appear on our bank statement yet. And those are deposits in transit. And we do have some of those. We have $200 in deposit in transit. And it doesn't look like there's any other additions that we have here. So we're gonna start looking at deductions from the bank side. Things that we know that the bank or doesn't appear on our bank statement yet, like outstanding checks. And we do have some of those. We have $900 in outstanding checks. Looks like that's all that we know that the bank doesn't know or that doesn't appear on the bank statement. So our adjusted bank balance is $3,100. So once we adjust the book side, we should end up with $3,100. So let's see if we do. So the ending balance per the books was $2,480. We're gonna start with looking at any additions. These are additions the bank knows about or that appears on the bank statement that does not appear in our books. One of those things would be um, interest revenue that would appear on the, um, the bank statement that we didn't have in our books. The other thing would be the electronic transfer that was collected um, from Kelly Brooks of $630, the EFT payment. So it looks like that's all the additions to the book side. And then we'll look at any deductions we might have. Well, we have... Uh, the service charge of $20. We didn't know about that until we got the bank, the bank statement. And if we sum all those numbers up, we end up with an adjusted balance of $3,100. So we're happy because it ends up uh, being the same adjusted balance there. Now a key thing too is we're happy that we ended up with the same adjusted balance, but we need to get this information in our books. We need to update our books. So how do we make the journal entries that we need? So once we've got our, um, a, our bank reconciliation completed, we need to get this journalized in our book. So what on this bank reconciliation do I need to journalize? Well, keep in mind, we're not keeping books for the bank. So we're not interested in journalizing the things that they need to adjust for. We are only interested in keeping our books. So we're going to focus on the book side of the bank reconciliation when we're doing our journal entries. So we need to journalize the interest revenue, the EFT, and the service charge. And notice that these are all going to affect cash because it's on the books, the book balance, the book cash balance. So the first one, the interest revenue, you would debit cash, credit your interest revenue. 
The EFT came from a customer in payment on their account. So you would debit your cash and take it off of their account receivable account. That was Kelly Brooks. And then we had a service charge. In most cases, service charges are very small. So you probably don't have an account called service charges. Um, you may have an account called miscellaneous expense where you put all of, all of those real small expenses into one account. And that's oftentimes called miscellaneous expenses. Don't forget, if you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up. And questions and comments are always welcome.